What if Earth isn't the best place to live in the universe? NASA built a space telescope with a single mysterious mission – to stare into the void and find other Earths. It succeeded. It found worlds more promising than our own planets, where water may flow, where life could already exist, or may have existed long before us. But some of these discoveries were buried, hidden in plain sight, until now. In the vast silence of space, most of what exists remains invisible. We look up at the night sky and see thousands of them, but hidden in their glow, orbiting quietly, are entire worlds waiting to be found. For centuries, humans wondered, are we alone? Is Earth the only place where life could bloom? Or are there other planets, maybe even better than ours, just beyond our reach. In 2009, NASA launched a bold experiment to answer that question. A spacecraft unlike anything sent before, designed not to visit planets, but to find them. Its name was Kepler, honoring the astronomer who first unlocked the secrets of planetary motion. And its mission? To stare at a single patch of sky without blinking. Day after day, year after year, Kepler focused on just one tiny slice of the cosmos. But don't let that simplicity fool you. Inside Kepler was a high-tech eye, a massive 95-megapixel camera attached to the largest mirror NASA had ever sent into deep space. It could detect the smallest flicker of light, the subtle dimming of a star caused by a planet crossing in front of it. That's how it would find new worlds, not by seeing them directly, but by reading their shadows. Kepler's method was precise, mathematical, and what it uncovered would ignite the imagination of scientists and dreamers all over the world. Within that tiny slice of sky were thousands of new planets. Some were strange, some were deadly, and a few were shockingly Earth-like. In just four years, Kepler transformed our view of the universe. It didn't just find a handful of new planets, it found thousands. 530,000 stars were observed, 2,662 exoplanets confirmed, and more than 4,500 strong candidates are still waiting to be studied. That number was more than all the exoplanets we had ever discovered combined. Some of them were gigantic planets ten times the size of Earth, orbiting their stars in just a few days. Others were searing hot, with temperatures high enough to melt iron. There were worlds with violent weather systems, permanent hurricanes, and even oceans of liquid metal. One planet, Kepler-70b, was found orbiting a dead star so close, its surface reaches over 7,000 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than most stars. Imagine a planet that survived its sun's explosion and kept orbiting what's left of it. But not everything Kepler found was terrifying. Hidden among the chaos were worlds that seemed familiar. Planets similar in size, temperature, and distance from their stars are the essential ingredients for life as we know it. These weren't just random rocks in space, they were potential homes, maybe even destinations. And that's when scientists began to notice a pattern. Some of these planets weren't just survivable. They were located in the exact region where life, in theory, could flourish. A zone where everything is just right. The next step in Kepler's story takes us there, to what astronomers call the habitable zone. Not all planets are created equal. Some are too hot. Some are far too cold. But a few orbit in just the right place. Astronomers call it the habitable zone or, more poetically, the Goldilocks zone. Not too close to the star, not too far. The perfect distance where liquid water could exist on the surface is the key ingredient for life as we know it. Out of the thousands of planets Kepler detected, only a handful were found in this delicate region. But the ones that were opened up a whole new level of excitement. Planets like Kepler-442b, over 1,100 light-years away. It's slightly larger than Earth, rocky, 
and receives just enough sunlight to potentially support oceans. Or Kepler 22b, one of the first Earth-like planets discovered in the habitable zone. Scientists believe it might have a water-rich atmosphere and a surface temperature not far from Earth's average. Then came Kepler 186f, a planet almost identical in size to Earth, orbiting a small red dwarf star. It might even have seasons and the possibility of a stable climate. These discoveries weren't just scientific milestones, they were emotional. For the first time in human history, we had proof our planet was not the only potentially habitable one. The idea that Earth was unique suddenly felt a little less certain. But how exactly did Kepler find these planets? It never photographed them directly, so how could it see worlds that were invisible to our eyes? The answer lies in a method so precise, it's almost like reading starlight as if it were a code. Let's explore how Kepler uncovered these hidden worlds one shadow at a time. Kepler never saw a single planet. It didn't capture pictures of alien worlds or glowing surfaces. What it saw were shadows. Imagine looking at a distant lighthouse from across an ocean and detecting a tiny bird flying in front of it. That's essentially what Kepler did, but from hundreds of light years away. This technique is called the transit method and it's as elegant as it is powerful. Kepler stared at over 150,000 stars at once. And every time a planet passed between its star and the telescope, the starlight dimmed ever so slightly, just a fraction of a percent. A momentary flicker, repeated in perfect rhythm. With enough of these flickers, Kepler could determine a planet's size, orbit, and even hints about its atmosphere. The method was so sensitive, it could detect changes smaller than the dimming of a car's headlight seen from thousands of kilometers away. And yet, in those tiny drops of light, entire worlds were revealed. Without a single photo, Kepler gave us a cosmic census, a map of planets we never knew existed, in systems we never dreamed could harbor life. It was like reading the universe in Braille, one light pulse at a time. But what if we missed something? What if Kepler's original data held secrets too subtle for its time? Years after the telescope shut down, scientists began looking again and what they found buried in that data changed everything. Let's explore the discoveries that shouldn't have been possible, but were. In 2018, Kepler's mission officially ended. It ran out of fuel. It went silent. And just like that, it became a ghost drifting through space. But its work wasn't over. You see, during its mission, Kepler had gathered an enormous archive of data. Over half a million stars had been observed, terabytes of light patterns, and many of them were never fully analyzed. Years later, with new telescopes and advanced algorithms, scientists returned to that old data. They looked again this time with sharper tools and new questions. That's when they found it. A planet hidden in the numbers, missed the first time, waiting quietly in the shadows. Kepler 1649c, 300 light years away, just slightly larger than Earth, and located in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. It receives about 75% of the light Earth gets from the Sun, just enough to possibly support liquid water. Its temperature? Surprisingly Earth-like. But here's the twist. It was almost overlooked. A minor computer error had misclassified it. If no one had checked, we never would have known. And this raises a bigger question. How many other Earth-like planets are still buried, hidden in old data? Planets better than Earth, waiting to be found not through new missions, but by decoding the clues we already have. But while these new discoveries gave us hope, they also revealed something else. A hard truth about the universe. Not every Earth-like planet is truly livable. Some are hostile, unstable, deceptively dangerous. Let's talk about the limitations and the challenges that stand between us and a second home. 
The idea of a second Earth is thrilling, a new world, a fresh start, but the truth is far more complicated. Out of the thousands of exoplanets Kepler detected, only 16 have been confirmed to orbit within the habitable zone. 16! That's less than 1% of the total. And even those come with warnings. Many orbit red dwarf stars smaller and cooler than our Sun, but far more violent. These stars erupt with powerful solar flares, blasting their planets with ultraviolet radiation. Radiation strong enough to strip away atmospheres and sterilize the surface. Other planets are too big. More like mini Neptunes than Earth's with thick atmospheres of hydrogen and helium, crushing pressures and no solid ground. Some are tidally locked, meaning one side always faces the star, baked in endless daylight, while the other is plunged into freezing darkness. Imagine a world where the sun never sets or never rises. And even if a planet is just right, we don't know yet if it has magnetic fields, tectonic activity, or stable climates, all key ingredients for long-term habitability. In space, being Earth-like isn't enough. You have to be Earth-stable, Earth-protected, Earth-balanced. But while many of Kepler's planets may be hostile to life, others are simply bizarre. Worlds that break every rule. Planets of lava, floating giants, and systems so strange, they almost seem impossible. Let's explore the weirdest worlds Kepler ever discovered. Some of the planets Kepler discovered were beautiful, others were terrifying, but a select few were beyond anything we imagined. These worlds don't just defy science, they challenge imagination itself. Let's start with the hot Jupiters. Giant, gas-filled monsters bigger than Jupiter, yet orbiting so close to their stars, they complete a full year in just a few days. Some are so near, their atmospheres are literally being boiled away by radiation, leaving behind glowing, evaporating trails like cosmic comets made of fire. One of these, nicknamed Kepler-76b, has such extreme winds that scientists believe it may rain molten iron on its dark side. Iron! As rain! And then there are the lava planets. Kepler-10b, for example, is a rocky world so close to its star, it completes an orbit in under 24 hours. Temperatures on its surface? Over 1,800 degrees Celsius. Scientists believe its entire face is a sea of molten rock, an ocean of lava stretching from horizon to horizon. No clouds, no water, just a blazing, churning hellscape. But weirdness doesn't stop with fire. Kepler also found planets orbiting in triple star systems, like KOI-5AB, where one planet is pulled and twisted by the gravity of not one, but three suns. Imagine standing on that world and seeing not one sunrise, but three from different angles in the sky, each one casting shadows in directions that don't make sense. Gravity there would be chaotic, unpredictable, maybe even dangerous. And if you think that's strange, Kepler found planets sharing the same orbit, moving together in a kind of gravitational dance, always chasing one another but never colliding. These are called Trojan planets. If both hosted life, two civilizations could grow up side by side, separated by space, never knowing the other exists, yet always circling together. Some of these planets may even be rogue, drifting alone through the galaxy, not bound to any star. Frozen. Silent. Lost children of the cosmos. These discoveries show us that our solar system is not the standard, it's the exception. Out there, the rules are bent, and sometimes completely broken. But even the strangest discoveries fade with time. In 2018, Kepler sent its last signal. It had given us the galaxy and then quietly went dark. But what happened during its final days? There was a moment of cosmic coincidence that made its ending feel like something out of destiny. 
let's talk about Kepler's story and the legacy it left behind. After nearly a decade of service and over 500,000 stars observed, Kepler's mission came to an end. In October of 2018, the telescope sent its final signal. It had run out of fuel. No drama, no explosion, just silence. It drifted into the void of a silent observer, now blind, continuing its orbit around the sun like a ghost ship, still out there somewhere. But the timing of its death was almost poetic. Kepler shut down on October 30th, the exact same date that Johann Kepler, the 17th century astronomer who gave us the laws of planetary motion, passed away, separated by centuries, but connected by purpose. It felt less like a shutdown and more like the passing of a torch. And that torch now burns in the mirrors of a new eye in the sky, the James Webb Space Telescope. Launched in 2021, Webb is a thousand times more powerful, and it's already looking at the atmospheres of exoplanets, searching for signs of life. But none of this would have been possible without Kepler. Kepler was our first real proof that Earth is not alone, not unique, that the galaxy is teeming with worlds. And somewhere out there, maybe in a small shadow, orbiting a quiet star, there could be a planet with clouds, oceans, maybe even forests. A planet not just like ours, but better. Kepler showed us the universe as it really is. Strange, violent, beautiful, and full of possibilities. Kepler didn't just find planets. It changed the way we see the universe. It proved we're not alone in the darkness, even if we haven't met our neighbors yet. And somewhere out there, a world better than Earth may be waiting. The search has only just begun. Then don't stop here. Watch this next video and prepare to question everything we know about this unknown universe.